Bootstrap was originally designed for a preprocessor called Less, but you can see here it also has this SAS um, component as well to it now, and that's because in Rails it's it's more easily linked to SAS. Um, it's it's set up that way from from the very beginning. But what what is SAS? Let's explore that a little bit uh, here. So SAS is kind of what a programmer would like CSS to, to be because it's got everything that you would expect from CSS and uh, SAS as a preprocessor basically provides you some additional functionality. One of the cool things about SAS is all CSS files are valid SAS because SAS is a true superset of CSS and so we're able to do things like have variables. Yay! It's so nice to be able to customize a site and say, well, I think this is the color scheme that I'm going to have, but uh, when I talk to the client, they may say, get it a little darker. Instead of blue, I want green, uh, blah, 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 whatever. Changing that in a giant CSS file is a pain, but with variables, you can just change those in key locations, and all of your rules are automatically going to be updated for, for those new changes, whether it's fonts, colors, layout sizes, it, you, you name it. So the way this works is this is the, this CS, the SAS file that you use, then you run it through your SAS preprocessor, and out comes the valid CSS that your web browser can use. Next nice thing that SAS provides is nesting. So instead of having to repeat your parent or ancestor uh, elements, you can nest them. So this is any UL that's inside a nav element, and these are all the attributes that apply to that selector. And this is all the list items inside that nav and these are all the links inside of that nav and so forth and what you can see is when that gets processed this nav ul gets turned into the proper css for a ul inside of a, a nav and the same with the list item and the same with the the link so it, it makes it a lot easier to kind of group things together and you can see that these are related elements where it's not always easy to see that these are related especially if you've got some elements that are for one part of your website and some for another and so they get mixed in it's really hard to see here you can easily put things that belong together next to each other and then you can have uh, modules and bring them into your your CSS I'm not going to focus on that too long, uh, but uh, then you have things SAS calls mix-ins. Basically, these are predefined functions that you can create with parameters that you can pass in. So you can create a function called border radius, so you don't have to remember all your web prefixes, and then you can utilize it in here, and it's much more readable and usable and so forth. Very, very nice. Or you can do inheritance. Um, in other words, you can say that this class success is like message, but this new feature. And what happens is all the attributes of message are also in success in addition to this border color. And we can do that with error and, and warning. And notice it does it very compactly. It puts all those classes with their common attributes here and then just overrides the, or updates the new attributes below. And then there's good mathematical capabilities. So you can actually do pixel computation or you can do color uh, functions as well. There is a, a lot that, that SAS makes just the way you want it. And just like with Bootstrap, I really recommend that you go to the documentation here and see uh, what it provides you. The, uh, functionality and the power that it provides is almost essential to be able to get a nice framework like Bootstrap working in a reasonable way and be modular, be updatable, and, and, and so forth. And so we're going to use SAS in our project 
because we're going to use the SAS port of Bootstrap. 